Brutal as it was, the Vietnam War held a deep attraction for photographers. No war has ever been photographed the way Vietnam was, nor will be again, because photographers had ready access to the battlefield. If you could get there, you could cover it, and the military went out of its way to make sure photographers got places. The quality of the photography was high. Shooting almost entirely in black and white film, those who covered Vietnam were masters of their craft. No other organization in the Saigon Press Corps could match the knowledge and experience of the Associated Press. No other had the down-the-line strength in reportage and photography. And no one combined the requisite technical and intellectual gifts like Horst Foss, chief of photos for Southeast Asia. On arriving in Saigon in June 1962, he quickly established an operation that would produce three photography Pulitzers. He converted a bathroom to a dark room and set about recruiting and training photographers, many of whom were Vietnamese. In the spring of 1972, the story was the Easter Offensive, the first attempt by the North Vietnamese Army to invade the South since Tet in 1968. In June and July, South Vietnamese forces counterattacked. When a South Vietnamese A-1 Sky Raider flying over the village of Tran Bang mistakenly dropped four canisters of napalm over Highway 1, 50 yards from the temple where civilians were sheltering. 21-year-old AP photographer Nikut was there. As he raised his Leica, a screaming nine-year-old girl ran into his frame. The clothes and skin burned from her body by the flaming jellied gasoline. In that moment, Nick's camera recorded one of the most memorable images of the war. Uh, I mean, take the classic Nick, Nick Woods, uh, burning girl. Uh, I photographed burning children uh, 10 years before him, and they were published in 1962, 63. In fact, my first Pulitzer has two pictures of a little boy in 1964, I think. Burnt. That picture had a big impact in 1964. but. Nick Utz's picture had an additional impact. He wasn't just somebody looking at you and somebody holding up the child, like in my case. In his case, that little girl was still running away from the action. And the way it was composed, um, um, it, it, it was different from, from the earlier pictures. So Nick added something that hadn't been seen before. Nick was barely out of childhood himself when Horst hired him in March of 1966. For safety reasons, Nick had left his parents to live in Saigon with his older brother, Win Tan Mi, a gifted AP photographer who gave Nick his first photography lessons. When Mi was killed by the Viet Cong, his family pleaded with Horst to hire Nick. They needed an income and had already lost another child to the war. Horst finally agreed, and Nick entered the darkroom, where he began processing film and making prints. Soon he was going out on Saigon City assignments. He made his first combat photos during Tet, and from then on, he was a combat photographer. Nick was at Tran Ban that June day because he had learned from an NBC colleague that the Viet Cong had locked down Highway 1. Arriving around 8 a.m. with his driver, Nick waited with other journalists. I focused my camera first, and I shoot one yet, diamond drop two more, and boom, explosion. And I took a picture of the whole thing. Then, like over a minute, I looked at another one. I shot the last picture, A1 Sky Rider. They dive and drop the four bomb. I look at the pocket bomb coming down, and you see a napalm explosion. I yelling. The, the, the camera next to me said, oh my god, a good, good picture of the bomb. 
you know, after the bomb, we don't hear no more. Maybe they all, they all die. And, uh, and after Black Smoke, I saw first one woman. She whip her eye because smoke. And more children and women, dog, cat, follow them, run a, on a highway. I, I keep shooting and shooting and say, the people still in the village, you know? Then like three minutes later, when the old lady came for her grandmother, she carried one year boy, her real boy, in her arm. She please help her run child, really help her. She keep walk like that with the whole boy and see the king come up, her legs, the king all come up, burn so badly. And when she go help, and she stopped right all the media, the camera. We have everybody there on the highway. And she stopped at one, like, few minutes, and the boy died, like, one second when I not shot my picture. When then I look my camera view, I look at smoke, I, I saw the girl, her arm was just running, open big mouth. By myself, I say, why is she wearing the clothes? You know, as in the black movie, I say, why the girl no clothes? Then I'm running, running closer. I could take a picture of her. When she passed to me, I saw her king come up, her, the body burned so badly. I said, no, I don't want no more picture of her. I think she died minutes. Then I had a water, I had two cans of water. I put water her body right away. And she screamed and said, if the water, I will, think I will die. I need drinking water, but not water my body. He tell her brother, he named Tom, I think I'm dying, my brother. Too hot, too hot. And I need something to drink. Photographer David Burnett was standing near Nick and Alex Shimkin. Shimkin being right next to him. And Alex was this very tall, very um, quiet and reserved, big tall guy, about 6'6". Six, six. And, you know, Nicky's like, what, 5'5", five, five maybe. But these two guys are standing, and we're all kind of just in a row watching this thing play out like it's a, um, like it's a theater, theatrical piece or something. I mean, we're here, and the, we're the audience watching this wall of smoke and the pagoda, and the road goes down there and the trees on both sides. And then all of a sudden, out of the smoke come these people running up the road. And immediately... Alex and Nick realized, I think, what had happened, and they just took off down the road. Time didn't stop for Kim Fook either. Nick put his camera down and lifted her and other wounded children into the AP van. They drove to the 12th evacuation hospital at Ku Chi, where Nick convinced the nurses to treat Kim, telling them that her picture would be published in the world's newspapers the next day. Then they sped back to the Bureau, about an hour away, to develop Nick's eight rolls of film, in time to move any pictures out. After about ten minutes, an image appeared of a naked girl. It happened to be the seventh frame on the roll, and, as Nick recalled, his dead brother, Win Tan Mi, was the family's seventh child. Yeah, I think my brother gave me. Then you see the picture negative, number seven. This means my brother, number seven. Very powerful. When I look, I said, unbelievable. Nick and his colleague, Jackson Ishizaki, rushed back into the darkroom to make a five by seven print. At that moment, Horst Foss returned from lunch. Yeah, Foss can look at the picture. He know the bad picture. He know look picture. He had who cool picture that. And Jackson said, and not a photo said, that Nick photo. A fat yelling. I say, why picture still here? Why don't move forward? And all either you think the picture we can do because she naked too much. With no time to lose, the print was rushed to the PTT office, where an AP operator transmitted it via radio signal to Tokyo and then onward to New York. At 50 Rockefeller Plaza, Chief of Photos Hal Buell stood by when he heard the words. Saigon is upcoming in five minutes. As the signal was recorded on film, Buell examined the image closely. So the picture came out by radio, and it, we discussed it for 10 minutes or so around the desk. 
nobody, we couldn't, even within our own ranks, we didn't have any objection to the picture because it was not prurient. It, yes, nudity, but not prurient in any sense of the word. It was a horror of war. It was innocence caught in the crossfire. And uh, it went right out, and of course it became a lasting con uh, icon of that war, of any war, of all wars. The picture won the Pulitzer for Spot News Photography in May 1973. At the time, Nick was the youngest photographer ever to win that prize. While the world was seeing the agony of an unnamed child, little Kim Phuc clung to life. On June 9th, the day after the napalm strike, she was transferred to Saigon's first children's hospital. Two days later, her parents finally found her there and took her by ambulance to the Barsky unit of the National Center for Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery in Saigon. And then I just remember when I wake up and I really remember is, is why, oh, I wish I'm not. The nurse just put me in the burn bath after six months of excruciating treatments, Kim went home to her family. It was more than a year before she saw Nick's picture. Fourteen months after I went home from the hospital, my dad gave it to me, that picture. And he said, yes, Kim, that's your picture. And the first time I look at that, I say, oh my goodness, why he did it? why he took that picture yeah. when I'm naked and agony and, and, and painful. It look ugly because around me, another children would close on. Yeah. And just only me in the center uh -huh. with, with agony, with, you know, I felt like as a girl, little girl, I felt embarrassed. But gradually, as she healed and as she grew, she began counting the miracles in her life. The first miracle I count on is why that my feet weren't burned. Yeah. So I was able to run to run out of that fire, and Nick Wood took that picture. All right. And then the second miracle that I count on that yes, I got burned almost like sixty-five percent of my body but my face and my hands still look beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Another miracle was the beginning of a lifelong friendship between Nick and Kim. Although Nick had visited Kim at the Barsky and made countless pilgrimages to her home while she recovered, she did not remember him. It was not until she was a 23-year-old medical student in Havana that she saw Nick again and he became real to her. In my mind, I, they talking about Nick Oud, uh, the photographer who took my picture, but unfortunately, I don't remember his face. Then 17 years later, when I knew that he uh, will come to visit me in Cuba, mm -hmm. And I couldn't wait to see him. I knew everything, but I didn't know. I, I not realized the, the face, you know. But as soon as he opened the door in the car, he walked out, it instantly it come to me, yeah, that is Uncle Ud. I tell her many times, I, I go to Vietnam War, some, I don't have a picture. People, under die so badly, no photo. But you had a picture and we are there. I hold my child and I look at that picture. It's just somehow the the picture is so powerful for me that let me think I have to protect my children. I never allowed something happened to my child. 